Hi, this is Tim Just, the 8020 TD, T H E 80 20TD.com. Let's look at some tips, tricks, and some other functions of Swissys here that might have eluded us in our earlier videos. One of the things that you can do is if you go to File and you start opening files, let's see, I think I want to open files in my Winter Open. You can open them one at a time. And as you open them, you can click on Setup and you can add them to a section list. Here, let's add another one. Let's add our Club 52A. Setup, add section to section list. Now, you can treat this the way you've treated all the other sections that you've seen in our video. Sometimes that's a handy little tool. Let's look at a few other things that you need to look at here. Let's reopen a section. Let's reopen My Practice Tournament, the one we've been looking at in most of our other videos. You can do some interesting things here. This is the open section, but if you want to go back around, often if you're trying to make the pairings for round three and things are just all messed up, or you're trying to enter results and things are just all messed up, and at some point everything's confused. You don't know what's going on and Swiss says somehow gets all mixed up. The easiest thing to do, and I have the open section click, is to go to file, go to open or reopen, it depends on where you're at. I want it to go to a specific spot. And I want to reopen a file in my practice tournament. Matter of fact, I want to go back to round one. This is my open section. Look at these files. I have an open 0C, the completed registration file. I have an S1A. Those are all the pairings for round one without any results. Here's S1C. Those are all the results for round one and any changes you would have made. If you open this file, changes you made after you completed round one won't be reflected. It's something to remember. I'm going to double click on this and notice we've reverted back to an earlier file. Understanding this file system sometimes helps you solve a lot of headaches in a very quick, easy manner. One of the other things that's kind of fun is, is if you have this list of players here on your wall chart, if you double click on any one player, a tinker screen opens. And you can do things like change their entry fee, add a USCF entry fee perhaps. You can give them buys before you pair around if they sign up on your buy list. Perhaps you need to change the way their name looks. There's a variety of things you can change here. By the way, you can scroll through this field. No, I really don't want to save these. By just clicking these buttons or clicking in any one of these names. Handy little tool. Practice it, use it, have fun with it. At this point, I really don't want to change anything because I need these files to make other videos. Besides the tinker, there's a whole variety of reports that come in handy to use a TD. Under Players, the thing that's probably most handy for you is the Buy and Active Players. There they are. You can print this list. That's helpful to you. And if you post it, it's also, also very helpful to the player so they can see they're getting the, that, that their friend who withdrew really did withdraw and that he won't be showing up. You can also hold on to that because it helps you often when you think something is amiss, something funny is going on. You can check this list to make sure the people you thought were inactive and had buys are really inactive in getting buys. A few of the other really interesting things are under reports. Prizes is something we're going to save for another video all on its own, but you might want to play with that. Upsets are fun. Individual upsets are the ones you have so far for the whole tournament and you might be giving away upset prizes. Yes, you can print all of these. Other reports that we have? How about ratings? Players like to see what their probable rating change will be. All of this is based on wall chart ratings, not the actual ratings at the USCF computers. What else is there under reports? Well, we have expired memberships. 
That's very helpful to you in tracking down players or just posting them and asking players to come and see you about those expired memberships. There's an advanced registration tab. This is something that you can write to an HTML file yeah, on the internet. You can write to a delimited text file which means you can open it with Excel and then print it out. However, we showed you a much easier way to do your printing jobs in an earlier video. And also under reports is something that we mentioned earlier called fees. We showed you how to set up your fees. This one is, is an extremely handy tool. This tells you all the fees that any one person paid, gives you a total. What's really nice is on this chart, you can print it and do some of your math, or you can copy it, you can copy the whole thing as a matter of fact, and then you can paste it into an Excel file. And you can do a lot of interesting and fun math with that. You can print it out also for your enjoyment. All right, what else can we look at? Well, something to remember. If you don't like the pull-down menus, you're not sure where something is, right-click on it. Look what I have here. For this wall chart, I right-click, and I can set it up as a pair number, standings. I can go alphabetical. I like to have my pair chart in standings order, the players like it, and I like it as a TD because over here I have everybody grouped together in their score groups. I can eyeball it and see what I think the pairings are going to be and then compare them with what Swiss is actually makes as pairings. That gives me a chance to make any necessary switches. The last thing I think we need to look at is how to handle the extra game section after you've made some pairings. Let's go, to, let's go to the reserve section. You can see that round two has already been paired. And we look at what to do if you had a round one problem. If you had a round one extra game. Let's look here. You can see that this fellow here has asked, has got a buy, and he's asked that he wants to play an extra game and keep his buy. And there's nobody for him to play. We find a houseman, but the houseman is inappropriate for him in this section. Here's what we can do. Let's see. N-A-S-Z. All right. Quickly, we find, we, we open up this little list. We find his name. We drag him to the extra game section. We want to duplicate him. We want to keep him in his original section. Okay. Okay. And we have a house player. What are we going to do with the house player? Well, we are going to go to this little pencil. We're going to register the house player. Let's see, reserve section. Nope, nope, that's not what we want. We want to enter them in the extra game section. And I'm going to enter myself. 1033447. Double click on it. Now remember, this extra game section, no matter what round you're using it for, is usually always going to be set up for a round one game. So what you want to do for this player, myself, is give me buys for all the other games not being played. Except, okay, exit. Here I am on the wall chart. Here's how you make those pairings. Click on the spyglass. Go to replacements. Click in insert before. Drag my name. Insert before. Drag the opponent. Insert before. And you're all set. Bye for now.